really pay very close attention to this next segment all myself, right. all right? Because for many adults, even though the holiday season is forgiving, sometimes expectations about how kids will react to the gift I that they it. can receive get in the way of enjoying the moment. Yeah, child psychologist Dr. Laura Saunders is here with some advice to help both the kids and the adults when it's time to open <laughs> the presents. Good morning, Doc. How are you? I am well. Hello, friends. Happy Thursday. We are coming up on the gift giving and receiving season. So it's important to think about and talk to your kids about how to appropriately develop and from a developmental standpoint, but how to appropriately receive a gift. OK, this is perfect because I was just telling Scott that my older daughter, Genevieve, she is someone that if you give her a present and she's six years old and she doesn't love it, she's going to let you know right away. She's going to either say, I already have this, or she's going to say, I want it in pink, not purple. And we're like trying to help get the right message across. So how do we do it? What, what, can, what are we doing wrong? Right. So it takes a little bit of prep <clears throat> about some of the guidelines. So, and the guidelines are when you receive a gift, you look at the person and you say, thank you. You can unwrap it. If it's something that you don't like, and it's okay not to like it, you think those thoughts in your head, you don't say them out loud. And then later on, you can come and tell me and we can try to fix the problem. However, all you focus on is receiving the gift, saying thank you, opening it, saying thank you again, and probably finding one nice thing to say as a means of thanks and gratitude. Which is, do you have the gift receipt? Because <laughs> Scott struggles with this too. I'm struggling there, Doc. I got to be honest with you. <laughs> Yes, as adults too, yes. we yeah, can yeah. we can accept a gift, be be have some gratitude and graciousness that someone took the time to give us a gift, um, and then what we do with it on our own time, we regift it, we repurpose it, then that's a whole different story. All right, all right. Well, Doc, I got to shift gears here. I got to ask you another question. Okay, a lot of kids are going to be off now for ten straight days. What can parents do? Because Scott says I can't just drop them off at Uncle Scott's yeah, house exactly. that entire Uncle Scott's, time. Uncle Scott's house is closed. <laughs> right. Uncle Scott's going to be doing other fun things. Right. Exactly. So um, it, t it does take a little bit of planning beforehand. But I do like parents to remember that this is not school and they don't need to structure the time the way school does. It doesn't need to be like from 9 to 10 we're going to do X and from 10 to 11 we're going to do Y. It doesn't need to be structured like that. Generally, what I recommend is that we have an anchor event, at least one event in each day that sort of sets the structure for the day. It could be a trip to the library. It could be a play date with a friend. Mm. It could be going to see Christmas lights. It could be a visit to grandma's house. It could be anything, but it's one anchor event. And that anchor event, whether it's in the morning, afternoon, or evening, then kind of lets the rest of the day unfold with structure. To, If possible, get outside, bundle up, get a little outside time, a little vitamin D, that's also super, super important. Yeah, Christmas Day, the temperature is supposed to be about 48 degrees with bright, sunny skies. So there's no reason not to get outside and enjoy. Especially with all the sweets and treats around, you definitely need to burn off. We all need to burn off a little energy. I think it is important to keep in mind to um, have age-appropriate screen time. So, um, you know, the, the amount of kids, it doesn't mean your kids are now on screens for 12 hours a day. So have some age appropriate screen time. And most importantly, keep your child's sleeping and eating schedule as close to their usual times as possible. Why is that so important, doctor? Keeping that schedule. The so, same. yep. So sleep, food and nutrition, food, nutrition and sleep are what help us regulate our mood and our energy. And while it seems exciting, there's time off, we, we just, we want to do things. The reality is we're only off, the kids are only off for about nine or 10 days. So we don't want them to get totally whacked out with their mood and their energy and, and have difficulty settling back into school after January 1st. I really love the anchor event because if there's something to look forward to each day, they're going to draw their attention to that. And they'll either have their anticipation or they'll look back and say what a great event it was. Right. And so it, I use anchor events as, a, as adults, as an adult also. Right. So this is my thing to look forward to. So it means I've got to get up. I've got to, you know, plan my breakfast or I've got to do this in the afternoon or in the evening. So it just really helps kind of set a framework. I do really encourage parents to, as I said, get outside. And if you don't have an anchor event, it's OK to plan something. 
a simple trip to the library, you know, going to the grocery store can be an anchor event. Um, so having something to do and sometimes getting outside the house can be really helpful as well. How do you find the balance, though, doctor? Because you want the kids to have fun, cut loose a little bit, but you also obviously don't want them uh, to feel like you know, they can do whatever they want. Right. Well, that's why I say one anchor event. We're not structuring the whole day, right? That's way too much work on parents. And often parents still have to work during that time off. Um, so the more you can um, allow a little bit of, of free time, right? And, and sometimes it's free time means we're going to spend a half hour in our rooms with books, right? No electronics, no screens, just with books. Uh, I'm not saying eight hours in the room, but a little bit of downtime, a little bit of quiet time. Um, it helps them work on that self-soothing so it's not just electronics and video games all day long. Well, I can only hope to that my hair looks as good as yours for the rest of this week. <laughs> amazing. It's Thank my you. holiday do. It's Thank amazing. You. <laughs> you look terrific. Thank you so much, and happy holidays. Happy holidays, doctor. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And Merry Christmas to you and Happy New Year as well.